Hello, Reddit. I've seen some videos on TikTok before about stories similar to mine and would like some advice on the matter. I really need it. My wife and I, I'm 32 and she's 28, have been married for a few years now, and we have two kids. My youngest son is three and our oldest daughter is eight. I love my family to death and have done many things to provide the best for them. My wife's family is my rock. Her mom and dad were very supportive of our relationship and myself as an individual. I grew up in a good home, nothing extraordinary or unusual, but I completely cut contact with them about 15 years ago after a traumatic event and their response. To begin that story, 15 years ago, I was 17 at the time, my family and I had planned a trip across the country to go snowboarding during winter break. We decided to fly, rightfully so, it was across the country, and our flight was at 6 a.m., meaning we had to leave around 4 a.m. with time to get there and whatnot. Around 11 p.m., my dad started to drink, swearing he'd be fine to drive within the time we had to leave, and my mother followed, both drinking up until around 2.45 a.m. My two brothers and my sister were all very fed up with my parents, as was I because very obviously who drinks that late and before we have a major flight, having to take a major road to get there in the first place. My parents weren't in the condition to drive and asked me to drive. At the time, I had freshly gotten my license and never drove on a major highway and was very hesitant and asked if we could reschedule the flight because I didn't want to drive in snowy conditions on a highway at 4 a.m. and my parents' response. My father told me he'd beat me to a pulp and leave me outside if we missed that flight because it'd mess everything up. I accepted, and as we left, everything was normal until about 30 minutes in, a car was speeding on the opposite side of the road, and attempting to steer out the way the car clipped the back of ours, tearing the car in half, leaving it flipping and crashing into a blockade at about 60 to 70 miles per hour. I woke up in the hospital, missing my right leg and half my right arm with burns across my right hip. I couldn't fathom what had even happened, but long story short, my brothers died and my sister was barely alive. Both my parents had survived with major injuries, but nothing fatal. My sister is alive, but her condition isn't what I refer to as living. After extensive treatment, I was released, and that started the hellstorm my parents put me through. My dad started to beat me, mock my loss of limbs, and neglected my needs to help progress in life without my right side. My mother never talked to me again, refusing any connection at all. Fast forward, I ran away to college and never looked back. I met my wife, and we had a kid, got married, and had another, and here we are. Now my wife does know the story and understands, but wishes for our kids to know their grandparents. She says it is terrible what they did, but up until that point, they were good people. She says it wouldn't hurt to reconnect, but I can't. They caused me to unalive all of my siblings because of their dumb mistake and alcohol-induced threats. I missed my brother's funerals because of my coma and my injuries, and had to mourn the loss of not only them, but suffered my parents' abuse and trauma of losing my right side. My wife is upset at me for it, and we're having a rough patch right now. She's saying she just wants what can be best for us and the kids. Her mother called me a few days ago, telling me she's sorry for what my wife said, and she just is struggling right now, knowing our kids won't have any but them. What do I do, Reddit? Can I forgive my family? I'm also sorry for missing story points and lack of detail to things. I was left with a bad brain injury, which causes me to struggle with descriptions and stories like this. Ironic. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot, your wife really needs to put herself in check. Why would she want to expose her children to people who, due to their choices, were responsible for the death and life-changing injuries of their children? You did not unalive your brothers. Your parents' drinking and really selfish behavior ended the life of them. I am so sorry you have lived with the consequences of their selfish acts. Their behavior after the fact makes them even worse people. Your wife's contention that they were good people up to that point is ridiculous. Ted Bundy and John Wayne Gacy were considered good people until they ended the life of their first victims. I am glad you were able to build a life after such a horrific tragedy and have moved forward. Please remind your wife that grandparents are not a necessity and your children already have more than they need with her family. If she can't support you in this, possibly MC will be needed. Make sure she understands going around you on this would be a fatal breach of trust to your relationship. Comment 2. Not the idiot. What the heck? Your wife is nuts. 1. I find their response after the accident even more horrible than the drunk idiots before, 
because they were sober and should have been begging for forgiveness from you and your sister. Instead, they became even more like the villains in your story and became even worse. Two, you didn't unalive your siblings. It was an accident. Your dad basically forced you with the threat of a beating. You had no choice in the matter, and your siblings knew that and wouldn't blame you. Three, your wife is wrong here. I'm sorry. This isn't like your parents crossed a boundary and you're being stubborn. Your parents aren't safe around you, and if they could turn on you, then what's to say they won't turn on your wife or your kids? Now, for the update. Thank you for sticking around for an update on my situation. Well, things took a turn for the worse. My wife, she went behind my back and contacted my parents. I couldn't believe it. She thought she was doing the right thing, trying to mend fences for the sake of our kids. But when I found out, it felt like a betrayal. I was furious and we had a huge fight about it. She said she just wanted to help, but how could she not see that bringing them back into our lives could only cause more pain? Then out of nowhere, my parents showed up at our door. They wanted to see their grandkids, they said. My wife let them in before I could stop her. I was livid, watching them play with my kids like nothing ever happened. It was surreal watching the people who had caused me so much pain acting like doting grandparents. My daughter, she was confused, but kind of happy to meet them. My son, too young to understand, just went along with it. But then, my sister, the one who was barely alive after the accident, she somehow found out about this reunion. She called me, her voice a mix of anger and despair. She couldn't believe I'd let our parents back into my life after everything. I tried to explain it wasn't my choice, but she hung up on me. I felt like I was losing my sister all over again. The next day, my parents wanted to take the kids out for ice cream. I said no. We argued, and my dad, he lost his temper just like the old days. He raised his hand to me, but I was quicker. I pushed him away, and he stumbled, falling hard. He was hurt, and my wife called an ambulance. The neighbors must have heard the commotion because the next thing I knew, the police were there, asking questions. My wife was crying, the kids were scared, and I was trying to explain that I was just defending myself. My dad ended up in the hospital with a broken hip. My mom was blaming me, saying I'd attacked him unprovoked. My wife was torn, trying to keep the peace but also standing by me. It was a mess. The police took my statement and there were whispers of charges being pressed. I was scared, not just for myself, but for what this was doing to my family. In the midst of all this, my sister called again. She said she was sorry for hanging up, that she understood now it wasn't my fault. She told me she was coming to visit, to support me. When she arrived, it was the first time I'd seen her in years. She was in a wheelchair, her body frail, but her spirit was as strong as ever. She stayed with us, helping to calm the kids and my wife. Then, as if things couldn't get any more complicated, my wife found out she was pregnant again. We were both shocked. With everything going on, it was hard to feel happy about it. But it also felt like a sign, a chance for a new beginning. My sister, she was a rock during this time. She talked to the police, told them about our childhood, about the accident. She made them see that what happened with my dad was just an old wound reopened, not an act of violence. The charges were dropped, but the damage was done. My parents, they didn't come around anymore. My wife, she apologized for not listening to me, for not understanding the depth of the hurt they'd caused. We're trying to move on now, the baby is due in a few months, and we're focusing on that, on our family. My sister has moved in with us, and it's been good having her around. She's become an aunt to my kids, a role she cherishes. It's not perfect, but we're healing slowly. Thank you for reading. My parents paid for both my brother's college, but said they were too broke for mine. So I watched them sell their house to make things right, and felt zero guilt. My parents paid for my brother's, 28-year-old male, 27-year-old male, 25-year-old male to go to college as well as for them to have an off-campus housing. So naturally, I, 17-year-old male, assumed I would be a part of it because I was told I would be. Yesterday, I told my parents what college I was planning on attending, and I was showing them the campus and stuff. I then started asking my parents when we could start looking for potential apartments I could potentially get. My parents were apologetic, and told me that they couldn't afford to pay for an apartment or pay for my college. 
They told me that they didn't anticipate how expensive everything would be when paying for my brothers. I was, am, um, absolutely heartbroken. I asked my parents why they led me to believe that they would if they knew they wouldn't be able to afford it. They told me that they were sorry again, but they weren't thinking clearly and were just too focused on trying to recover from paying for my brothers that they forgot to inform me. My dad then told me that they're lucky I received some scholarships. I told my dad that even with the scholarships I received, I'll still have to cover the other half of the tuition. My parents told me that they understand and they'll help me take out loans so I'll be able to cover my other half of the tuition. I told my parents that I appreciate it, but that I would rather not take out loans as I didn't want to go into debt. My parents asked me to reconsider as they didn't want me to give up so easily, but I told them that I was fine. They asked me what I was going to do instead, and I told them that I wasn't sure, but I'll figure it out before I graduate. My parents were not happy with this and told me that I should still go to college because I'll be ruining my future if not, and that I've worked hard to get to where I am. I told them that I only worked hard because I thought I was going to graduate college debt-free, not debtful. I reminded them that when I graduate high school, I'll already have two certifications that could allow me access to job opportunities right away, so it's not like I'm just not going to do anything. However, my parents are upset with me and told me that they feel like I'm punishing them by not wanting to go to college anymore. They told me that I know they'd pay for it if they could, and they feel like I'm throwing away opportunities I won't have again if I refuse to take them. I told them that it's really my decision whether I go to college or not, and I'd appreciate it if they leave me alone. This all happened last night when my parents left my room. I could hear them crying through the walls, and it was making me feel uncomfortable and guilty, knowing that they were crying about me. This morning, before I left, my mom told me that she feels like I'm purposely choosing not to go to spite them. She told me that they'll help me the best way they can, and taking out loans isn't the worst thing I could do. She told me I could save money by going to the college near us, nine miles away. But I told them that I never applied to that one, and all the ones I applied to weren't around. Now my mom is upset with me because she said she feels like I'm putting them in a horrible situation and thinks I'm not going just to hurt them, which I don't understand. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. This is a very sad situation for you to be stuck in. Your parents should have told you all this before now and not waited until the last minute as you could have applied for more financial aid. What do your brothers have to say about this? Can they help you out as according to your parents, your brother's overspending caused this hardship to be dumped onto you? They must have jobs of their own by now and should be willing to pitch in to help. If I were you, I would contact my brothers and ask them to come to the house and have a family meeting about what to do to help you the same way they were helped by your parents. I agree with you not wanting to go into debt for college, and this is incredibly unfair to you that your parents did not budget the college money they had so that each of their kids would receive some amount. If no solution is found to help, then I, for one, would be looking for a job and going completely no contact with my parents for showing favoritism to my brothers. Comment 2. Not the idiot. You are actually being very responsible. It is your parents' own fault that they are upset. They are the ones who led you to believe they were going to help you just as much as your brothers. Not everyone goes to school right away, use one of your certificates to get a job and save up for school. I'm sorry you're going through this. Your parents don't owe you anything, but they were very wrong in not telling you the truth beforehand. Take it from someone who knows and has been paying off loans for the past 20 years. They are not worth it. Now, for the update. Thanks for sticking around for the update. So after that whole mess with my parents, things got even more complicated. My oldest brother found out about the situation and decided to step in. He called me up saying he felt guilty that he got the full ride from our folks and I got the short end of the stick. He offered to help pay for my tuition, which was a shocker. I mean, we're not that close and he's got his own life to deal with. But then my other brothers got wind of this and all hell broke loose. They started arguing among themselves, each one saying they should chip in too. It turned into this huge family drama, with everyone pointing fingers about who got more from our parents and who was more successful because of it. It was like watching a soap opera unfold in real life. In the middle of all this, my parents were trying to play peacemakers, but it was clear they were overwhelmed. They never expected their past decisions to come back and bite them like this. And me? 
I was just standing there watching my family unravel over something that should have been a simple, happy milestone in my life. But here's where it gets hectic. My second oldest brother, the one who's always been a bit of a hotshot, made a move that no one saw coming. He sold his fancy car, the one he'd been bragging about for years, and handed me a check, said it was his way of making things right. I couldn't believe it. That car was his pride and joy, and he just up and sold it for me. With the money from the car and the contributions from my other brothers, I had enough to cover my tuition without the need for loans. I was floored. It felt like, for the first time, my brothers were actually seeing me as an equal, not just the kid brother who was always trailing behind. But the drama didn't stop there. My parents, feeling ashamed of how everything played out, decided to downsize. They sold the house, the one we all grew up in, and moved into something smaller, more manageable. They said it was to help them save up so they could support me in other ways during my college years. Now I'm sitting here with a college fund I never expected to have, watching my family pick up the pieces of their own mistakes. It's been a hectic ride, and I can't say I'm not resentful about how it all started. But in the end, my family came through for me, even if it took a bit of a crisis to get there. Thanks for reading. My spoiled brother gets kicked out and expects me to clean up his mess. But when he steals from his friend and I get the bill, I cut ties and watch him fall from grace. So I'm the oldest child of my family. I have a sister, Kate, and she is the middle child and a younger brother, Heiz. He has always been the classic golden child of the family. I can stay here for days telling the episodes that can paint him, but I can only say that the day I turned 18 and moved out of our family house was the best day of my life. On the other hand, Kate and I always had a great relationship and we are extremely close. In fact, we live near each other and we always support each other in everything. Our common trait is the pure hatred for Highs and his diva character. Add the fact that our family is very wealthy and the picture is complete. Our parents always tried to cover up his unbearable and diva attitude, for example, silencing the gossip news of our country filled with Heise's nonsense. This episode explains well his attitude. Three years ago, Heise was arrested because he set a police car on fire, thinking it was funny. Fortunately, no one was in the car, but my parents did a tremendous job of covering up this story, and fortunately, almost no one knows about it. This is just a small episode, but it shows his absolutely idiotic and spoiled character. So, over the years, my parents always turned a blind eye to him and treated him like a king while treating us with disdain. Anyway, the issue is that they finally opened their eyes to Heise's behavior and tried to discipline him. But after years of no results, they threw him out of their house. Finally, karma hit him hard. But the thing is, Heise is now stressing me and Kate to help him find a house and a job. But we immediately refused, so now he is staying at a friend's house. But even his friend is tired of him and being called poor because his friend isn't as rich as we are. So I'm spending days being happy that Heise finally has what he deserves and everyone is treating him the way he always treated others. Because yes, another one of his things is being the classic rich snob who treats others from top to bottom just because of our family's wealth, but recently, Heise has been insisting, especially with me. So I just exploded and told him during a call that finally karma hit him hard, and our parents realized too late that he was a spoiled brat and a jerk. And me and Kate, for sure, wouldn't help him, not even under torture. So he needed to grow up and face the consequences of his spoiled character and behavior. We argued a lot, and then I just hung up. Now the thing is... While Kate supports me, my parents told me that I should be more understanding with Heise and help him anyway, because he is always our brother, and we should help family. So yes, I argued with them as well. So am I the idiot for not helping my spoiled brother? Now for a few comments before the update, comment one, not the idiot. To your parents, he might be my brother, but he is your child, the one you raised to behave like this. So if he needs help and understanding, then he can go to you. You don't get to throw him out and try to hoist him onto me to deal with what you created. So either you help him or he actually stands on his own the way my sister and I have done. End of story. Comment two. Wait, your parents threw him out and refused to help the monster they created, but they expect you to? Not the idiot. That's your parents' kid. If they feel bad for him, then they should be the ones who do something about it. 
Now for the update, thanks for keeping up with my story. So after I hung up on highs, things got even messier. The next day, Kate called me, her voice shaking. Turns out Highs had shown up at her place, uninvited, with a sob story about how he had nowhere to go. Kate, bless her, is too kind for her own good. She let him crash on her couch just for one night, she said. But one night turned into three, and Highs was already acting like he owned the place, leaving messes everywhere and eating all her food without a thank you. I was fuming. I told Kate she was letting him walk all over her, but she just sighed and said she felt sorry for him. That's when I realized, no matter how much we despise his actions, we can't help but feel responsible for highs. It's like he's got this hold on us and we're too used to bending over backward to keep the peace. But then, the real news dropped. Our parents called for a family meeting. Apparently, they had a change of heart about highs. They announced they were giving him another chance, and not just that, they were buying him a new apartment. I couldn't believe it. After all his antics, they were rewarding him? And there I was, working hard for everything I have, never once getting a handout. The injustice of it all made my blood boil. I argued with them, told them they were making a huge mistake, but they wouldn't listen. They said I was being too harsh and that family sticks together no matter what. It felt like a slap in the face. I worked my tail off for everything, and here was Highs getting everything handed to him on a silver platter. But it didn't end there. The next day, Highs's friend, the one he'd been staying with, called me. He was furious. Highs had stolen money from him, a lot of it. He wanted me to pay it back, saying it was my responsibility as Highs's brother. I told him where to go with that nonsense. I wasn't about to clean up Highs's messes anymore. That's when Highs did something I never thought he'd do. He went to our parents and spun a tale about how he needed the money to pay back a debt to keep himself safe. And they believed him. They paid off his friend and didn't even question it. I was at my wit's end. It was like no matter what Highs did, he got away with it, and I was left picking up the emotional pieces. I had to do something, so I took a stand. I told my parents that if they continued to enable Highs, they'd lose me. I couldn't be part of a family that rewarded lies and deceit, it was the hardest thing I've ever done, but it was also freeing. I was done being the doormat. The aftermath was a cold war. My parents were hurt, Kate was torn, and Highs, uh, well, he got his apartment. But I stood my ground. I focused on my life, my work, and my own peace of mind. It was tough, but I had to show that actions have consequences, even if I was the only one upholding that. Thanks for reading. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.